Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how you can refer to an Excel table when you're creating formulas. This is especially valuable when you expect that the list that contains your data may expand. So here we have a request from the manager. The manager says, what I want, Danny, is I want to see a total of the units sold by each customer and a total of the invoices for each customer. Now, for this scenario, I'm going to pretend that I ignored or didn't understand the second part of the request. Oh, and by the way, the list may expand. So I first approach this by saying, you know, the SUMIF function would be a great function to use. So SUMIF has two required arguments and an optional third argument. The first argument for SUMIF is to look inside a range. Now I've already created names for customer, unit shipped, and invoice total. So I want to look inside the range that I've called customer to meet this criteria. The criteria that I want to match inside the customer range is the individual customers over here. So I have a list of the individual customers and I want to match that. When I find the match then I'm going to use the optional third argument which is in this case for unit ship. So tell me how many units were shipped to each of the individual customers that you will find inside the customer range and I'll quickly copy that down. Now I'll recreate this using the sum of the invoice total. Again, I think what will help you when you're using a sum if or a count if function, anytime you're looking inside a range, is create names for that range ahead of time. So there's my name for the customer range. Here is my range that I'm going to be summing the invoice total. So over here equals sum if and I like to use the control A keyboard shortcut to bring up the function arguments dialog box. So the range that I'm going to be looking in is customer. Since I've created the name I can use the F3 keyboard shortcut which brings up the list of the name ranges, click it and then paste it into the function argument. The criteria is that I want to match each of the customers over here. So I'm going to keep this as a relative reference which will be copied down because I've named the customer range that's going to be an absolute reference so that won't change as I copy down but each of the customers will copy down as I copy the formula and finally the third uh, optional argument and you can tell that it's an optional argument because it's not using the bold formatting so I want to get a sum of the invoice total once again F3 is a keyboard shortcut to say let's sum up the invoice total click OK and there you go and double click to fill that down. So I proudly take that into the manager and the manager says oh Danny we have some new information. Now I want you to add in the sales for June. So watch what will happen when I put in June 1st and let's say it's for the ABC customer and let's put in 200 units and $4,000. Now watch what happens with the problem. You see because I use that name range, the name range was from row 13 down through row 32. Well what happens when I add in additional data? Well my data set expands. So I have the solution for you which is to take advantage of Excel tables. Excel tables were introduced in Excel 2007 and they continue to get improved in Excel 2010. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to make a selection here. Now I could draw that with the mouse or I could use control A to select all the cells in a contiguous range, control C to copy, and I'll come over here and say control V to paste. Now I'm going to create my formulas based upon the table. So first I must turn this data set into a table. So in Excel 2007, Excel 2010, come up here to the Insert tab on the ribbon and click Table. Now here's the dialog box. My table has headers, that's correct, and this is the range for my table. Click OK and there you go. The beauty of a table is that as my data expands, so does the definition of my table. So if I put in another record, 400 units, and let's call this $8,000 in sales, you see the definition 
of the table expands whereas when I use name ranges and I'm a big proponent of using name ranges there is a limitation they won't expand unless you go in and manually change the definition now what I want to do before I start to create the formulas is I want to name this table so notice that when I click inside the table I get table tools design click outside that goes away so this is called a contextual tab on the ribbon so I want to go to table tools design and I want to give this table a name and I'm going to call it DR table DR for Danny Rocks okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of copies so I'll do control C come over here and say control V and I'll do the same with the units and the dollars this time I'm going to hold down control as I drag it and drop it to make a copy all right let's just expand that this time I'm once again going to use equal sum if but I'm going to have my formula refer to the table so equal sum if now new in Excel 2007 and in Excel 2010 is what's called function autocomplete so you see it's narrowed down the list of my possibilities so I want to use some ifs so I'm going to press tab for the range what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the range in the name table remember I created the name for the table called dr table so I'm going to put in dr and you see it gives me the list of the names so I'm going to use tab to select that now the important key here the gotcha step here is after I refer to the table use the left bracket use the left bracket which will then bring up the labels for the fields in your table so I want to look inside the name range for the table called customer so I'm going to use tab and remember to use a right bracket so we're including inside a bracket the customer field in the table now I can click uh, or press the uh, comma for the second argument this time I'm just going to make a reference to the first customer in the list another comma and for the third argument once again I'm going to refer to the table so I start typing the name of the table so dr table tab left bracket and then from the drop down list in this case what I want to sum for units will be the unit shipped and then remember after you select it to use a right bracket so include the field label include the field label in your formula inside a left and a right bracket and now I'll close off the formula control enter I'll copy over the formatting I'll use the format paintbrush and now when I copy this down notice the difference over here is that as I add additional records if I add an additional record over here for ABC and I'll put in 400, uh, 250 and 5000 that the formula in the sum if over here didn't change but if I put that same record over here and in this case I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to hold down control and just drag it to append it over here notice that now my formula updates so my formula will update to reflect the new values in there let me show you again I'll use the sum if and this time I'm going to again make a reference to the fields in my table equal sum if and I use the range in the table so dr table remember I named that table dr left bracket so I want to look inside the range which is in the customer field tab to select it right bracket to close it off comma make a reference to the first customer comma once again the name of the table dr table tab left bracket and then in this case point to the invoice total tab to select it right bracket to close that off right parentheses to close off the formula click OK copy over the formula right mouse click format paintbrush draw that down here and now when we copy down we will have our formula so the key elements here uh, is number one use a table rather than a fixed range of cells when you create your formulas to refer to the fields in the formulas I find it better to use a name rather than table one table two table three give your table a name that you will remember and then remember to include the left bracket 
the field name the right bracket. So over here, the name of the table, left bracket, and then from the drop down list in Excel 2007, Excel 2010, select the field that you wish to use. Remember to close that off with the right bracket, right parentheses, and there you have it. And I have more lessons about tables for Excel 2007, which can be applied to 2010 in my DVD series, The 50 Best Tips for Excel 2007. And I'll see you in the next lesson.